Well, we start things off with Kayla Chavez. Right-handed hitting leadoff woman. Steps in and watches one wide. It's the Minnesota team that it's not just the batting averages that are high max. They're consistently one of the best teams in terms of drawing walks, getting on base any way they can. Those OBPs, always a factor. As Chavez way out ahead of that, change up, fouls it off. Yeah, really both these teams for many years now have been right at the top in terms of on-base percentage in the Big Ten Conference, Minnesota and Northwestern. And when you talk about Northwestern's offense, yeah, maybe they're not hitting the ball and slugging it as well as they were last year. They're still finding a way on base. Both these teams, very patient approaches. But you make a mistake early, they will jump on. So 1-1 one, one on Chavez. Our umpires, by the way, for today, Aaron Peterson behind the plate. Marty Abizition at first and Tanya Gehrig at third as Williams goes up one and two in the count on Chavez. And Chavez, one of the exceptions to that rule about the on-base percentage, has walked just three times all year. An interesting choice for a leadoff spot hitter in this Minnesota lineup that is rife with high on-base percentages. And she goes after that one well out of the zone. First at bat strikeout for Danielle Williams. Jess Oakland has stepped into that shortstop spot and just been phenomenal. She is able to hold up on that first pitch changeup that goes beyond the average once again. Oakland has done so much in the top of this lineup collecting a 4-11 on base percentage through the start of the season and has played some phenomenal defense at short as well. She fouls that one off. And you know she's ready to get after Big Ten play. This Minnesota team filled with fresh faces coming off a really disappointing year last year. Piper Ritter squad is Oakland way out in front of that changeup to run the count to one and two. But they feel like they can make some real noise in the postseason this year. And sure enough, in non-conference play, Max, they were five and four against ranked opponents. And you talk about you know all the new faces, but so many of them have just meshed and gelled so well and are performing so well offensively and defensively. You talk about you know someone like Taylor Kraft with a Duke transfer who didn't play much as a freshman. She's come on this year. What has she done? She's hit 346 and leads the team in homers. One two is well high and wide, trying to get Oakland out the same way she got Chavez. Chavez, but no bite there from the true freshman. Williams has pitched against Minnesota more than any other team in the Big Ten. And in doing so, as the longest tenured pitcher in the Big Ten and the one with the most innings, she has pitched against Minnesota than more than any other Big Ten pitcher has pitched against any other team. Yeah, she picked up her 976th strikeout of her career to start today. She's just 24 away from becoming the fifth Northwestern player to do so. And there's and another. There's 977 right there. Two up, two down. But here's a player who has given her trouble in the past, and she really gives everybody trouble. It's Natalie Denhardo. Yeah, 65 home runs, former All-American. I mean, having another great year. Her numbers might actually be even a little down from what they've been the last couple of years, but you just know what you're going to get from her game in, game out, week in, week out. It's remarkable how consistent Denhardog is. She has faced Northwestern pitching 40 times in her distinguished career, has faced Williams more than half of that 40. But she takes that one just off the inside corner. It was almost a year ago today, last year, March 27th, in a game in Piscataway at Rutgers. She broke the Minnesota program record in home runs and just keeps on adding to make her own. And now looking, and it would be fitting, to pass a Northwestern program legend at Northwestern's home field this weekend. Should she be able to hit one out? This one's a chopper to shortstop. Nelson up with it quickly and able to throw out Den Hardog. So a one, two, three first for Danielle Williams. 124 Ks to 14 walks this year. Respect up the walk ratio is almost nine to one. And it really shows you the difference between the way these two programs at the start of the season, Max, some of those numbers. 99 innings so far for Pease, which leads all Big Ten pitchers. Williams on the other side, the ace for the Cats, is just barely over 40. Both have come in ready to go today. The slap hitting Shellmeyer stands in. Slaps it foul. These are her first two years in Minnesota. Shared the circle with Amber Pfizer, the legendary hurler. Last year was her first as the true ace, and the staff really struggled. Shellmeyer watches that one over the outside corner for a called strike three. Maeve Nelson stands in. Watches one low and in. She may be struggling right now. Getting in a 193 clip, but Maeve Nelson has had good lifetime success against Autumn Pease. Three for nine in her career against her with two home runs and a double. And you know just how quality a hitter Maeve Nelson is. She's not hitting the ball well for average, but on base percentage still over 400. She's first in the team, having drawn 13 walks already. 
And that's the reason Kate Drohan said she's sticking with Mabe in the two spot. Ahead of Jordan Rudd, wants to get runners on base for Rudd, the RBI machine, as many times as possible. And Nelson has proven a consistent ability to do that over her five years at Northwestern. It's continued this season. The 1-1 from Pease. Hit her on the shin. And that's one way to get aboard. So our first base runner of the game, Maeve Nelson, takes her right off the shin. And of note for Jordan Rudd, she watches that first pitch across the outside corner. Both her and Maeve Nelson, those 211 are out of a possible 212 games. Iron women the pair in the two and three holes. And Jordan Rudd stands in. You see the numbers this season. He's been hitting it very well lately. Had a great weekend last weekend in Oklahoma City, although she struggled on Tuesday against UIC with a couple of game-winning hits, one against Auburn, one against Weaver State. Got five RBIs, though, still in her last three games. OPS over 1,000 last year. Just so consistent here, right in the middle, right in the heart of this Wildcats lineup. Nelson leaning off first. Not typically a stolen base threat, but she's got plenty of speed over there. Because that one's a chop foul at the plate. It's a different style of pitching, trying to work through these innings, maybe a higher pitch count early in games. Rudd, of course, notable for how rarely she strikes out over the course of her career. And she watches the one, two, just wide. Her own walk to strikeout ratio, little, little reversal of fortunes, is over two to one, Max, if you include hit by pitches. This year she's walked or been hit 15 times and struck out just six. And she's been so patient, you know, when you've been as good as she has been now for five years. Pitchers maybe pitch around you a little bit, and she's been willing to take those free passes. The two, two is wide. And that is the eye of a fifth-year player playing her 211th game. Back-to-back -back pitches there. Yeah, that rise curve coming out of the hand of Autumn Pease looks good for a whole long time. Pease has been known to touch 70. She's got a lot of zip on that ball. But Rudd able to lay off. Runs the count full. Pease has the sign. Rudd watches it on the corner for strike three called. What a pitch by Autumn Pease. She pulled the string. Rudd couldn't pull the trigger. And there are two away for Hannah Cady. Two outs, one on for Hannah Cady. She fouls it right near our broadcast position. It ticked off the top of the net before it could get to us, though. But they've got confidence in the speed out there to track down any balls hit over their head. Cady, the cleanup hitter, stands in. Swings right through a rise ball. Pease is popping the radar gun right now. We may not have it on the screen, but I promise you that one was getting up there. Very quickly 0-2 on Katie. And that's just so enticing out of the hand, that rise. It just keeps on climbing up. So hard not to chase. Pease has her sign. Looking for a third strikeout in this bottom of the first. Can't get it at least yet. Another 0-2 from Pease. Hits her on the elbow. And two hit batters for Autumn Pease have put Northwestern in a position to get some runs here in the bottom of the first inning. Just gave that elbow and maybe another inch towards the plate to make sure she got hit by it as Zedak watches it wide. The red hot Angela Zedak, couple extra base hits on Tuesday, hit the ball hard all three times. That average steadily climbing towards 300 but she has always struggled against Minnesota and against Autumn Pease in particular. Has never had a ball touch the outfield grass off of her bat against Pease in 10 tries. Swings through that one off the outside corner to even the count at one. And maybe that pitch and that hit by pitch to Hannah Cady kind of perfectly encapsulates Northwestern. Yeah, they're not slugging the ball well, but down in the count, you go too far inside, they're gonna take that, they're gonna hand the baton to the next batter and let them do the damage. Absolutely. Zedak, by the way, not showing ball. That's the timing mechanism that she's used over the past couple years to great effect. Pulls that barrel back and watches it down and out. Timing was right that time. Yeah, it's really whatever works. It's whatever makes you comfortable at the plate. And that's exactly what makes her comfortable. So she's been doing it for a while. And as we've seen, especially on Tuesday, the approach, the timing, everything's timed up real well right now. When you're hitting the ball hard out the other way to the alley and right center as a right-handed batter, things are working. Your mechanics are good. Absolutely right. 2-1 from Pease. 
Tedek fouls it back. That was a good pitch to hit right there. Talk about every flagpole to say exactly where the wind's going. That's why there's so many out there. Exactly right. 2-2. Two -two. Way behind it. Pease strikes out the side and works around a couple of hit by pitches. Northwestern strands two. A seamless transition for Elke. I mean, look at Kraft on deck. She has just been incredible. Didn't play a whole lot last year, transferred in. She's out there starting every game now for a Gophers lineup. That's really performed well, and she's been incredible in the middle. Maddie Elke, true sophomore, played very sparingly last season to the Wisconsin native, but she has shown herself to be a formidable part of the Gopher lineup early on in her sophomore year. You talk about a glow up. How about a 375 average for Elke, who has quickly become a staple of the starting lineup. After getting that same limitations on time early in the year, she's way ahead of that changeup, however. That great change there for Danielle Williams. Pretty impressive. The 2-1, just high. And we talked a little bit about that changeup for Danielle Williams. If you talk to pitching coach Michelle Gascoigne and head coach Kate Drone, they'll tell you Williams has up to four different changeups that she will utilize depending on the batter and the count in the situation. There's another one. She has more of a drop ball action. Drops it in for a strike either way, and the count runs full. And that's just the sign of a veteran who's been doing it for so long and doing it for so long at such a high level like Danielle Williams. She has lots of ways to put the hitter off balance. Another change, and Elke able to get the bat to it, but cannot keep it fair. She gets the sign, seventh pitch of the at-bats. Fouled again. Once more back to the changeup well. My personal record for changeups in a row that I've seen Danielle Williams throw is four. So we're, we're halfway there, Max. It's not a pitch you see tripled up on a whole lot. Not a lot. Four in a row. But she is just trying to throw off the balance of Maddie Elke. Goes back to the heat, but cannot catch the inside corner. Elke works a tough, tough walk to gain Minnesota their first base runner of the game. I love the idea here from Danielle Williams. Kind of change up the eye level a little bit, go up in the zone, goes with the heat, just misses. What a take from Elke. Yeah. What an at bat, especially spoiling a few great change up offerings. Remarkable at bat from a cleanup hitter, showing in her first Big Ten play appearance of the year that she belongs in this conference. Hey, here put, is Kraft. You put it up at an AB like that against Daniel Williams. It's going to be a good year. Kraft watches a change up low. Mentioned the catcher transfer from Duke. Very good program in their own right, but she saw limited time last year. She knew if she came over to Minnesota, she'd have a starting spot waiting. This team had a voided catcher that they needed to fill. And Kraft has more than stepped into it. Yeah, you want to talk about setting the bar high. One they've had so far this year. You're doing something right. This one's hit not as well. Donahue can't get it, leaping in shallow center. And Elke reads it perfectly, able to slide into second safely. It's the first base hit of the game. And there are two on with no outs for Minnesota. Past four, uh, three games for Northwestern. Bunches down the third baseline. Katie goes to third. And a five to six put out. What a defensive play by the Cats to take away the sacrifice from Nani Valencia. In the maroon and gold, Sydney Stralo watches the first one high and wide. It's been a tough start to the season offensively for Stralo. It was scuffled a bit, but she's a key part of this Minnesota lineup. A chance to do some early damage here against Williams. She watches another one. And we talk about the few returners, but Stralo, one of four players from Minnesota that started every single game last year. 473, that was her on-base percentage during Big Ten play, led the Gophers. She's got to get back to that here as we start conference play this year. The bat has been cold, and she takes a strike right there. And you can see even on that pitch, Max just looked unsure of whether to pull the trigger. Runs the count to 2-1. And Kate Drohan, when she talked to us earlier this week, she said the biggest thing this weekend against Minnesota was throwing off the timing of the hitters. Stralo turns on that one and fouls it away. Stralo at the plate has plenty of speed as well. The Wildcat infield is at the baseline of the corners and around to the left. Williams can't catch the corner. Looking for another looking strikeout, couldn't find it. What a big pitch this is here. 
You know Williams does not want to give Strelo a free base in this situation. The 3-2. Way over the top. The changeup buckles her. And it's a third K for Williams in a huge spot. And then the Minnesota defense, Delaney Cox, the junior out of Colorado, watches a first pitch strike. Cox has been in the lineup for every game this year, bounced around in terms of where she's been in the order just a bit. On base percentage, as she takes it off the helmet, I was about to mention that on base percentage, plenty high for Delaney Cox, and the 384 mark is gonna rise a bit more. The true freshman sees the bases loaded against Danielle Williams, and she takes the first pitch low. Shell Gascoigne came out to talk to the whole team just now. Quick mound meeting. 1-0 to Burnett. Hit well down the line! It's gone! A grand slam for Breezy Burnett! And the Gophers, just like that, are up for nothing. For the freshman, and now Kayla Chavez steps up, trying to make it worse, and she hits it well. Zedak back at the wall, and it's off the base. Chavez has to hold up with a long single, and Zedak got it back in quickly. But all of a sudden, the Minnesota bats are working. A drastic turn from the first inning here at the J. All of a sudden getting aggressive early in counts from Breezy Burnett and then from Kayla Chavez. Made a nice adjustment, Chavez struck out the first time, comes back, smokes that single, almost left the yard. That was almost back-to-back -back pitches, back-to-back -back homers. And now Oakland watches it change up for a strike. And Minnesota made her pay. Can Oakland make it worse? She runs the count to one and one. And I think the thing you were hoping coming into conference play for a Northwestern fan is that some of these numbers would kind of find their level because they had just an incredibly tough schedule. 11 games versus ranked teams in their first 22. Now you get back into conference play. But Minnesota, as you know, always a very tough opponent, especially to start with. Yeah, certainly no break for the Wildcats and Danielle Williams. Lauren Boyd already warming in the right field bullpen. The Cats' number two starter who's been electric this year. Williams trying to get out of this pickle. Right in Minnesota, the bottom of the order really doing the damage there. Cox able to get on base, load the bases up, and then Burnett the swing of the day. No one's wrapped foul. Has walked a player, giving up a soft single. Hit by pitch in this inning, and she hits another batter. Oakland takes it off the elbow guard. Suddenly, Williams looks like she's in big trouble. Den Hardog can really open things up here. Williams is looking for those calls on the corner. She's just not getting them. That one missed by a hair. And then Hardog ahead 1-0. and Such a great matchup for so many years, Then Hardog versus Williams. I love what Coach Kate Burlett had said about these two. They probably both at the beginning of the year looked at the other team's roster and said, really, she's still there? That was a great quote. And it doesn't make it any less true. And Williams, you know, is feeling that way not only about Den Hardog on the roster, but about her in this spot. Like you said, Max, when you retire a player for the last out of one inning, you don't expect to have to worry about them the next inning, especially in a spot like this with two on and two out. And now a 1-1 count on the Minnesota Slugger. That's hit well, but Nelson is there. Could have gone the short way. Instead, throws to first in time for the outs. She watches a first pitch change up for a strike. Cochran did have a Little League home run against UIC, but they don't put that one in the stat sheet, so you still see zero homers next to the name. It was a fun one to watch, though. <laughs> That's for sure. And, she, and Kay Drohan said it could be a potential turning point for her. The aggression she showed on that play, showed some aggression right there, but the wrong kind. And that rise ball from Pease is hopping. Cochran's behind 0-2. Yeah, she said she doesn't remember the last time she saw Nikki Cochran dive and seeing her dive into home plate. Maybe that sparks her going this year. With a very inexperienced bottom third of the Wildcat lineup waiting after Cochran. Pease looking for a quick first out. Doesn't get it on that pitch. 7-8-9, Farnham, Donahue, and Lindsay. It's a matter of finding that again here this spring. 
She's been notably clutch too. A lot of those big hits have come against really good teams. Is she able to lay off that one? Outside, no swing as we suspected. The count runs a two and two, but as I was mentioning, Farnham, Donahue, and Lindsay, seven, eight, nine coming up. The trio, none of the trio, if you combine them, sorry, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought for a second. They've started one Big Ten game combined coming into today. So not the level of experience you'd expect to see out of this generally very experienced Northwestern team. How can fouls that back? I'm so if you're Northwestern, you gotta be a little bit worried about how that bottom of the lineup is gonna hold up against Minnesota. Yeah, now it's of course the bottom of the lineup that finds themselves up here at the plate in the second, down by four. Right. Cochran, did she go on that one? No, she did not. And the count runs full. That was a lot closer than the first check swing appeal. Cochran has had a great at bat to start this bottom of the second. Can she turn it into a base runner for Northwestern? The payoff from Pease. Hit well down the line and under the glove of Cox. Cochran cut in for second. She's got a leadoff double. And the Wildcats are quickly in business. Barnum lays off. And we've seen some great at bats today from both sides. I mean, what an AB that was from Cochran trying to set the tone here after falling behind by four. Barnum is such a great story. The senior out of Crystal Lake, Illinois, has stuck with this team through four years of getting really inconsistent playing time, has always been a vocal leader in the clubhouse. 1-0 misses high and wide. He's played very solidly in limited playing time this year. Had the massive home run against Auburn last weekend. Give the Cats eventually that win. And it's the second home run of her career. She only had four ABs coming into this season, but like you said, she's had some clutch hits. One of the really impressive things about Farnham we'll get to after this pitch is the 2-0 is on the way, and it's low, and gets away. Cochran's going for third, and a great base running job by the first baseman. Cochran not known for propensity to steal or run in general. A runner just 60 feet away for the Wildcats. Farnham right through it. It is in fact a pass ball. Two and two on Farnham. And as I was about to say, Max, a chemistry major over the course of her Northwestern career. The two two. Fouled off the glove. Again, a game of inches, inches away from a strikeout right there for Autumn Pease. Running from practice to, to labs, it's, it, it's remarkable, some of the stuff you have to do. Farnham was walking to the dugout, and the umpire said that ball's outside, rubbing the count full. Yeah, I think strike one Farnham thought was a ball, it was too low, that was the drop pitch. It was called a strike. This time, you know, on replay, it looks a little bit outside, not yeah. the best angle there, but I mean, I think Farnham really said it all there, thinking it was strike three. Max, you, you're, you're so right, we do not have the dead center camera, but it did look outside from that vantage point. Another payoff. Bridget Donahue waits on deck, would be a massive pressure spot for the true first year if Farnham can't get the job done. Another 3-2, checks it up, did she go around? She did! Oh, that was really tight. It looked from up here like Farnham had definitely holed up. So one out, a huge K for Pease to get to Donahue here. And she watches it right down the middle for strike one. That might be the best pitch she sees today, let alone in this at bat. Yeah, it's tough when you go up there, you take the first pitch. You're having a, a struggle offensively so far this year and you get a great one. Watch it go by. Phoenix native. It's had a tough time acclimating so far for Northwestern. And 0-48 batting average, one for 21 on the year. She pops that one foul. Pease. Gets the K. It looked like that ball short hopped in. Donahue did not opt to run either way. Lindsay the sophomore. Highly touted recruit out of Iowa City. Pressed into starting duty after the injury to true first year Kelsey Nader. Lindsay's been in right for the past three games. She watches that one wide. Lindsay, the opposite nine hitter, trying to recreate some of that magic. From Burnett. The 1 1. Change up. Wide. That's a heck of a take by Lindsay. Fouled back. 
Yeah, you said it went right after her there. And can't maintain the four run lead. The 2 2. Did, she went around on that one. No, she did not. Wow. Once again on the replay, definitely held up. The 3 2. That's high. What an at bat by Lindsay. And she passes the bat to Shellmeyer. They like to mess around with it sometimes in a first and third scenario. As Shellmeyer watches it high and wide, especially with a younger catcher in Kraft. Maybe put a little pressure on her. Lindsay capable of stealing a base. She had six of them last year. But has not yet stolen one this season. She's 0 for 1. Cochran, of course, not much speed from third, though. She gums up the works there a little bit. The 1 0. Lindsay does go. No throw. Kraft not messing around. And Lindsay gets her first steal of the year. Now two in scoring position and a 2-0 count for Skylar Schellmeyer. We saw some two-out magic in the top of this inning. <laughs> Schellmeyer in the driver's seat. Watches the strike, change up right down the heart. And once again, Pease does not want to see the on-deck batter. It doesn't matter what Maeve Nelson's batting average is. The success she's had in the past against Pease tells a different story and goes right after her on 2-0. That's a change up left up. That's a long walk for Shellmeyer after that pitch. I think she got one she thought she maybe should have handled. Two and one now. Foul back to the screen. Shellmeyer, another really tough out, does not strike out often. Already pitched 50 for the game for her. The 2-2. Two -two. Up. Not by a whole lot. The Minnesota defense wanted it badly. Three and two. Blooper! And it'll drop! Wave it around as Lindsay the throw from Den Hutterg is late! And there's the two-out magic you were referencing, Max. A big time piece of hitting by Shellmeyer. Nelson hits it well. Just over the upstretched glove of Oakland. Back to back base hits for the Wildcats and there are two on with two out. Supreme contact for the Wildcats as Rudd hits it much harder. Burnett can't get it all the way to the wall. This is gonna score two. The game is tied and Jordan Rudd with a two run double. The Cats have responded to four runs with four of their own. And we've got a brand new ball game. How about this? Actually, I'll bring it after Katie's first pitch here. That was the 33rd plate appearance for Jordan Run against Minnesota. Only her second ever extra base hit against the Golden Gophers came at a huge time. She's now just two for 12 against Pease. You gotta think that Pease is aware of those numbers and so is Rudd, but able to stem the tide there with the struggle she's had against the Gophers. Katie fouls it away. And now it feels like the Wildcat bats are starting to cook. You know, Kay Drohan told us this week, Max, she said, confidence is so key for our hitters. Once we can get a little bit of confidence, we really can keep that going. He was preaching confidence and pitch selection. And the pitch selection here in the second has been sublime. No doubt about it. 56 pitch of the game is check swing. That's a swinging bunt and no chance at Katie at first. Oh my. She couldn't have rolled it out there any nicer than that, Max. Three extra base hits in her last six trips to the plate. Zedak watches it high. And could the Wildcats try some more chicanery with the base runners? Unlikely, Katie is not particularly fast, and Rudd is even slower at third, but you never know. That's five straight that have reached now with two outs, four straight hits. He's really putting some mileage on that odometer. 58th pitch of the game. She hasn't gotten through the second. And it's a strike. For Autumn Pease, who is in her 101st inning of work on the season. The miles are starting to add up, but at the same time, she's a veteran, she's a fifth year. She knows her arm, she knows her body. And Piper Ritter trusts her to be able to keep her head above, to be able to keep her head above water in a situation like this. Zedag watches it down the pipe. One and two. And we'll talk about the Wildcats' luck as the one-two comes for Zedak. On the corner for strike three called. Eight runs, all with two outs. Elke hits it well, but foul. 
Matty Elke clearly seeing the ball well out of Danielle Williams' hand so far. That was the ninth pitch she's seen in her second at bat. This Minnesota lineup not cowed by the reigning unanimous Big Ten Pitcher of the Year, the All-American. You know, the hardest hit balls we've seen from the Gophers have generally come on the first pitch of any at bat. That's a good point. That one misses just down. Probably wouldn't have been low on too many hitters, but Elke, with that 5'9 frame, the knees are a little bit higher than the average batter. Or 5'10, pardon me. Should not short her that extra inch. Because that one misses up and in. Always got to round up with height. Always. Max, you and I are proponents of that strategy. Let's just say that. I could round with the 5'9, but it'll be rounding up a decent amount. Nelson going back, misread it and drops it. A misplay by Maeve Nelson at shortstop allows another leadoff batter to reach for the Gophers. Well, I would call that one an error, but we still have not seen an official ruling as Kraft takes the first pitch on the inside edge for a strike. It was one of those where it's right in between, you know, a hit and an error. And they do officially go with an E6 for Nelson. Yo one. She's way behind it and pops it into shallow right center. Donahue takes care of Kraft for out number one. And now Nani Valencia, who bunted into a force out her first time, is way over the changeup this time. An interesting lineup decision. She came up, like you said, two on, nobody out, dropped down the bunt. It was a great play from Katie. Someone who hasn't been out there a ton. And now a taste of Big Ten action once again up there with someone on base. And it was one of those situations where Northwestern saw a player who has struggled with the stick so far this season, 205 average for Valencia in limited time, and said, look, she's probably going to drop a bunt here. And sure enough, Katie came charging up. It would have been a great bunt if Katie wasn't 30 feet away from her. That's what makes it so tough. But now Valencia's got a 2-1 count. She has just one extra base hit this year. She takes strike two right there. Even if you keep the bat back, I mean, what are you going to do with it? And that time, a weak ground ball. Williams wants two. One, six, three. The Wildcats turn a gorgeous double play. And Danielle Williams erases the error just like that. How about that defensive effort, Max? Talk about the schedule. They played so many teams, not only in the top 25, but in the top five. They oh. played the best teams in the country. Um, and, you know, they're just trying to get right back to that calendar World Series like they were last year. I mentioned in Northwestern. He's faced off, I'll expand to top 10 a little bit, with six top 10 teams, Max. They've played Oklahoma and UCLA, top two teams in the country, within a run. Scott can fouls it back to the screen. Actually, I think UCLA might be number three right now. Don't fact check it up. They were right there to win that game. And the 1-1 one, one to Cochran. Checks her swing and foul tips it into the dirt. Kate Drohan asking to clarify. I think that was what the call was made. Yep, tipped into the dirt for strike two. We almost had another check swing situation, Max. I know you were waiting with bated breath. I'm still waiting for a review today as yeah. well. Unfortunately, can't review those check swings. <laughs> Too bad. One, two. Hit well to right center. Tracing it to the wall is Valencia. Cochran looking for a second double. Going to be a play, but she's there safely. Nikki Cochran. Kate Drohan said she loved the confidence she was starting to see from Cochran this week. Cochran kept her weight back just long enough as Farnham watches it in the dirt. That's a nice smother by Kraft who almost saw that one get away. Farnham struck out last inning, but saw eight pitches in the process. Got a good grasp on the ar arsenal of Pease right now. Pops it up. That's gonna get out of play. A struggle to be consistent in terms of getting on base over the course of her career. Shows bunt here, pulls it back, takes up high. He shows the perfect pitch with throw a rise ball, but Farnham able to get away from it. Make it just their sixth start today. She only got four hits in her college career, but half of those four have left the yard. There you go. There you go. It's a good ratio to have. And overall home runs to it to plate appearance ratio is pretty good too. Not too shabby. Yeah. Two one to Farnham. Grounds it towards short. Tough play in the hole. Long throw is there. Jess Oakland once again shows as Donahue steps in. 
Struck out on three pitches her first time up. Going to avoid that fate here. And she watches ball one. And it was a good response inning in the circle from Danielle Williams, who was dealing with the runner on, but managed it nicely. And this is a big response inning from Autumn Pease. We'll see how she does. Runner on as well after giving up the four spot. The Wildcats continue to make Pease work. Donahay watches it wide. Gophers have relied on Pease so much this year, Max. An inning load, the ERA numbers. She's been a maximal workhorse for them. As that pitch is fouled away from Donahue and a stat. Two and one. Hit well down the line by Donahue, chasing into the corners, Burnett, and it's foul. She can't quite reach it. The two, two. Fouled again. And once again, the Wildcats are pushing Peas deep into a camp. And they're carrying over to the third inning because we're seeing deep count after deep count now with virtually every hitter. 2-2. Two -two. Hit sharply caught. Nice play at the hot corner by Chavez. That ball was foul, but still, This is a first pitch strike. Lindsay worked a clutch walk last inning to start that two out brigade. With Shellmeyer waiting on deck. Checked her swing again. And check goes down to the third base side because the umpires are rotated with a runner at second base. At five for five, six for six. Change up to Lindsay in for a strike. Again, I think overall six for six, but a couple of those were grading on a bit of a curve because they weren't that difficult. But still, I mean, you know, 100% in any, in any task is impressive and deserves to be lauded. That's hard at full speed. I mean, live, I, I think we've missed a few. We, I, I certainly have. I don't know about you. Lindsay watches it low. Trying to come back from a two strike count again. Ayanna Lindsay. Sophomore. Rocking that 42 in the Gothic Ice uniform for Northwestern. The white and purple with the gold trim. Minnesota wearing their typical road all maroon uniforms today. It's a nice color contrast, I must say. Lindsay hits it well to center. And that's going to get by Den Hardog all the way to the wall. A clutch piece of hitting by the sophomore. She's headed for third. The throw's ahead of her. Is the tag there? It is not. And Ayanna Lindsay has a two-out triple. Joking just a second here. The right-hander, the third most used pitcher in this gopher pen. has pitched to a 3.98 ERA so far this year. She misses that first pitch wide to Shellmeyer. A bit of an unfortunate full name for a softball context, Max, because Bree Enter, I don't know if you noticed this, sounds a lot like re-enter. So whenever she goes in the game, it sounds like the starter's coming back. That's, that's make it a little tough on the PA. Shellmeyer, tough play. Backhand stab, long throw, no chance. And the Cats have made it six to four. Shellmeyer better get back to the bag. She's out. She turned like she was gonna go to second base. That's a good call at first. I was ready to go full umpiring clinic because our trio of umps have done a terrific job here so far today. Yeah, but bizarre inning, but back-to-back, -back, two out, RBI base hits from Lindsay and Shellmeyer, and that's why Northwestern has this 6-4 cushion. Particularly for Lindsay, the second triple of her season, and third of her career, as Williams has Stralo way out over the top of that pitch. But for Lindsay, second extra base hit of her season, both have come at really critical times. She needed to get that run in there to get the Wildcats ahead, as Williams thought she had a call at strike three right there. Instead, it misses the outside corner, and she delivers with a line shot to center field. The clutch hitting from the Wildcats against Autumn P so far has been really special. Yeah, and you talk about kind of the contrast in the top half of Northwestern's lineup versus the bottom half, and you kind of know what the order is going to be one through six. But in that sixth spot, Nikki Cochran has struggled this year. She had that huge play offensively, but was 0 for 3 on Tuesday. Today, she has really been a table setter with those pair of two baggers. And how about this? Estrella waits for the 1 2. 
in the dirt. And Not think, something you expect to see. And she finished with probably just about 80 pitches through yeah. two and two thirds. Yeah. That one's tapped towards third. Katie cannot get it on the fair side of the line. Absolutely, and, and meanwhile, Danielle Williams starting to rack up the pitches. Straylow's working on the seventh pitch of this at bat. Williams is ready to throw in excess of her 60th pitch. Our stats are buffering for a second, so I don't have the exact number for you. At the bottom of the zone, strike three called. Straylow goes down looking. Maybe if anything, if that wasn't gonna be called a strike, what was it sold well by run behind the plate? Absolutely. She pointed before the call came, that's for sure. Cox watches the first one wide. And you're so right about the borderline calls, Max. We've had about eight or nine of the closest calls you'll see. We've only been playing for three plus innings. It's not every day you see a game like this where everything is just so much on the margins. That's right on the outside margin. It really feels like Danielle Williams has bounced back so well. You know, they had that leadoff runner on base last inning, but it was on the error. Gets the double play herself to get out of the inning. Comes back with a strikeout to start the four. And, and she, she's really locating well now. Yeah, just nip that corner one more time. Sure, sure. Nothing wrong with it. Hey, I mean, look, Minnesota clearly needs something to, to start to turn around for them. One, two in the dirt. Call it a technical foul if I'm on the line, because there's no points there. Oh, good one. That was good. <laughs> it's a Big Ten opener. You got to be loose. Got to be having fun. Yeah, we love it. Cold day in Evanston, by the way. Two and two. Come back to the screen. <laughs> well, the ball's been hit early. It's been hit well. Chopped at the plate. It did hit her in the foot. And since Cox was still in the batter's box at the time, foul ball. No harm, no foul. Well, no harm and a foul, I suppose. <laughs> it's easy to say no harm from the booth, always. Well, I mean, she's got the big strapped on, you know, shin guard there. It covers the foot. I think she's okay. But it is cold out there. Wow, how did Cox manage to get a piece of that one? She started her swing with the balls about 15 feet away from her and managed to hold up enough to get a piece. That was floating and felt like it was almost in slow motion. I mean, that swing is basically all arms because everything else has already progressed forward. Remarkable piece of hitting to stay alive. Can Cox pay it off? Fouls it off her body again. And this is, in a game of long at bats, the longest so far. 10th pitch coming up next. A heavy dose of off speed inside, and Cox has been able to get the barrel to it, or get the bat to it, I should say, not the barrel, but just to stay alive with some foul balls. And watches that one high. Man, after you foul off five pitches in a row, how hard is it to watch one high like that and not feel compelled to chase? This is really good stuff from Delaney Cox. Can she turn it into a trip to first? Not yet. Might have been her best swing yet, though. Got another riser right probably at the top of the zone. Down the line and foul it looked. Yep, that's the call. Katie tried to get the glove to it. You've had fouls of almost every variety from Delaney Cox here. You can see that one foul all the way. Landed foul even. So not that difficult of a call in the end. Not to take anything away from the crew, of course. It's just they've had so many tough ones. Another 3-2. Flown high into center. Wins playing with it, but Schellmeyer's underneath. And she makes the play for out number two. Bunts and fouls it to the screen. When you look at that home run swing. That is an easy, breezy, beautiful stroke there from Breezy Burnett. First A-B. 0-1. Way out in front. And it's also not often you see Grand Slam next at bat, first pitch, bunting for a hit. Burnett, tons of speed in that outfield corner. Got a lot of pop in that bat. Yeah, she's been really close to making a couple of diving catches today. And this Minnesota freshman group looks phenomenal so far this year, but Burnett caught looking right there. Williams pulled the string. Uh, Florida, I mean, they come from all over the country. She goes and does a ton of work to find maybe freshmen who aren't getting a lot of playing time or great seniors that are highly touted recruits goes out there and convinces them to come up to Minnesota to play softball. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is Nelson waits for the 1-0 just wide to get players from states like California and Florida to come to Minnesota and play softball tells me you sure know how to recruit. 
Because I can tell you this, Max, I would not be doing that if I lived in California to come up to a state where it's 30 degrees for most of the year. Um, and you got to play on the road for the first month. I mean, it is, I'm joking a little bit about it, but it is a real recruiting restriction for these programs, for these Big Ten schools. And then to go into the ACC and get a player who's already at a great program like Duke and like Kraft, who's behind the plate, and convince her because she's not getting a play time, but she is transferred, she's in the portal. Maybe Nelson just missed Marty Abazition on that last pitch, and then... Time called before the pitch here. That's about as late as you're ever going to see I time think, granted. I don't actually think Nelson called time. I think that was called behind the plate. It didn't look like Nelson made any motion. And she's not typically a hitter who likes to do that. Either way, the count hangs at 2-2 two and two for Nelson, who's been hit and then singled in a run back in the second. Chops this one to short. Oakland backing up, plays it well, and gets it over in plenty of time. You mentioned Ed Harrog not getting a great start. She was also playing very far in on a hitter like Lindsay, who does not have, a, has not shown at least, a ton of pop in her career. And I think Minnesota paid for it there. They're a little bit deeper for the top of this order, but still not as deep as you'll see a lot of Big Ten outfields. As Rudd watches it at the knees for strike one, although I should say that right now, we've got about seven of our nine flags blowing due in, which is as much as you're gonna get at any one given time. Seven or nine is a, is a nice majority here at the jail. You'll, you'll take that. 1-1 one, one on Rudd. She watches it on the outside corner. Rudd gave that one a little bit of a long look. One of those classic, give me that one for my pitcher situations for a catcher at the plate. And what a sweet stroke she had. That two run double in the second to tie things up really kind of changed the tenor of this game. She watches that one low. Jordan Rudd last weekend passed the legend Tammy Williams to move into fourth all time in RBIs in the Northwestern program. She adds a couple more back in the second. She can add one here, theoretically. That one is fisted out towards short. Jess Oakland, who's getting plenty of work over there today, makes the play for out number two. The RBIs are coming off the bat the same way as Katie is hit for the second time today. He's been aboard all three trips. Swung the bat so well here on Tuesday, and I'm trying to get a base hit and continue this pull. You can tell Minnesota feels that this could be a potential inflection point for this game here. If Northwestern can add more in this inning, it's going to start feeling like a title win. But it's still only a two-run game, even though Northwestern has scored six unanswered. If they can get out of this inning unscathed and get the bats back to work, then you're feeling much differently with the top of the order do up. And this is danger time in this game because there's two outs. That's right. Zedak takes it high, as Max alludes to. We've seen 10 two out runs. We have seen 10 two out runs. We've only seen 10 runs. And all 10 have come with two outs. Well, both coaches at this moment at least have to be very pleased with the two out clutch hitting. Absolutely. Zedak, I think that hit her foot. No, she's running it out, and she's out at first base. Plate put up four runs on three hits. Chavez watches one over the middle for a strike. In all the rest of the innings, Danielle Williams has faced nine and set nine down, although one reached on an error and was later retired by the double play. Yeah, five straight retired, two strikeouts, also the one, six, three double play that she helped kickstart. She's kind of really locked in, and this feels like a crucial drunk juncture in this game. Like you said, not only third time through, we're into the fifth. She's over 80 pitches now. Big inning here for both sides. Absolutely. In that second inning that we discussed already, Danielle Williams threw 32 pitches. Only throwing 47, the other three. 45, pardon me. But the pitch is starting to mount. It makes it a lot better when you can get a three pitch K like that. Something to keep in mind on any fly ball in that area. As Oakland watches it at the knees for strike one. Again, game time temp, 43 degrees. It hasn't cooled off or warmed up much since then. For Big Ten opening day, Feels like 80 for these for these ladies, I'm sure. Who have all seen some heavy weather conditions. We need an on-field meteorologist here during softball games. Update you between half innings on the, the weather, the incoming rain. Well, what would you call me the if wind. I'm not that, Max? You, know. you are, I'm saying for everybody. I though. get it, I get it. I get the fans it. here aren't, aren't here in your media, meteorology updates. Well, that's a good point. We could open the window, but then it would be, <laughs> that, that would cause other problems with us, I guess. It's nice and toasty in here, I will say. 
One, two on Oakland. Looking for her first hit of the day. Somehow stays alive. Almost went down to a knee to get to that one. Absolutely. She gets to that one though. Tags it off the top of the wall. About eight inches from a home run. Instead, Jess Oakland will have to settle for Minnesota's second single off the left field wall in this game. Well, we've seen Williams double and triple up those changeups today a couple of times. Oakland showing how skilled she is as a hitter. As Dead Hardall goes through that one up top, that she was able to read it and adjust that quickly within the at bat to stay back and tattoo that one. And if you're Northwestern, you come out of this series, you think one of the biggest things is facing Den Hartog with the bases empty. Well, she's up here representing the tying run after the single with one out. Two people, like we said, who have seen a whole lot of each other in five years. Last time Den Hartog was up, Williams stranded two. Chavez and Oakland were both on the bases. That runs one and one. In fact, that was one of the main things Kate Rohan talked about specifically was seeing the bases empty for Den Hardog. Not even giving her the chance to strand runners. 1-1, one, one. checks it up, takes it high. And this is where you love it, just like a game of chess anytime you think maybe it's gonna be change up. Then Hartog sees a riser that's just way out of the zone, but able to hold up, check up on the swing, not go around, and now you got the count turning in your favor, 2-1. Then Hartog takes a long rest stop outside the batter's box. And watches it outside. Heck of a bat so far for Natalie Den Hardog. That was a great take. Well, the Gophers lineup has been ferocious this year. Den Hardog watches it on the inside corner. A beautiful pitch from Williams. Working it all over the place. Goes up and in, goes up and away, and then comes right back inside corner. And when she puts it on you like that, curveball with some heat to it, it's gonna be really tough to get the bat head out in front of your Den Hardog, even if you did want to swing at it. 93rd pitch of the day for Williams, the 3-2. Fouled. Den Hardog once again, way out in front of the changeup, but once again, able to get a piece. Grounded up the middle, pass Nelson. That's a base hit into center field. Schellmeyer bobbles it a bit, but able to get it in before Oakland could advance. And Den Hardog's third ground ball in the area of shortstop is the first one to get through. The Gophers have two aboard for Maddie Elke. Her season high last year was 153. So she's not quite there yet as Elke watches a first pitch ball. Just missed at the knees. But still, the pitches are starting to mount for a pitcher you want to come back in at some point this weekend. Minnesota's already pulled on him, Pease. And Elke calls time just before Williams got into the motion. That one was close. And that's a big thing also going forward potentially for Autumn Pease. If Minnesota could find their way back in this game, she was barely out there, only a couple of innings. She could be nice and fresh tomorrow. Well, you would think that as Elke swings over the top, but she did throw nearly 90 pitches, so there is that as well. As the 1-1 is on the corner, outside edge. Perfect pitch from Williams. I think Williams is starting to feel herself a little bit. After allowing the single, got to come right back and be aggressive with Elke, and she's done just that. Trust in the stuff here. That one's tapped towards Nelson. Was it caught in the air? Did it? No, no bounce. Just picked off the ground by the bat of Elke. Nelson, who dropped Elke's pop-up last time up, makes the play this time. But in reality, your mileage may vary. Another first pitch strike. Again on the outside edge to Taylor Kraft. Kraft singled in the second, the first hit of the game for the Gophers at that time. Came around to score. Popped out to shallow right center. Donahay collected it in the third. This one's fouled. And suddenly Williams is one strike away from getting out of this inning. 0-2 oh on the catcher. Outside. Wildcats do have action in the bullpen once again. It was Lauren Boyd warming up earlier. It's Lauren Boyd warming up right now, I do believe. One and two. Oh, that's crushed! Way out of here! Under the roof! Taylor Kraft changes the game with one swing! and becomes the first visiting player to join the Welsh Ryan Groove Club in more than seven seasons. 
It's seven to six at this field, even in the vicinity of that fall. And that was when Rachel Lewis hit one up on that roof. Her sophomore year hit it so hard that it was still going up as it went over the roof. This one had more of the majesticness to it than that, but all the same, Taylor Kraft with a moonshot. And Minnesota has turned things around in the blink of an eye. Well, by the way, 13 runs now with two outs. The trend continues. And you gotta be kicking yourself if you're Danielle Williams. You pitched very well. You bounced back in a tremendous way. And it's just two mistake pitches today. Two pitches that were left up over the middle of the plate like that one right there to Taylor Kraft. And the one-two changeup, she didn't get it down. And when you don't get it down, bad things can happen. Again, we talked about the home run rate earlier in this broadcast as Valencia is set down on strikes. And it comes to bite Williams again. Capable hitter, but she's got tons of speed on the pads. Farnham, that was not a good looking bunt attempt. Just jabbed at it. You'd expect a little bit better from a senior there, but. And yeah, that's not a pitch you want, you want to bunt either that high. And that's when if you get contact on it, you might be seeing a pop up in the air. Farnham. This time gets it down, but it rolls foul. The diamond here at the J is just the tiniest bit slanted down that third base line. She has mostly stayed in the zone, missing wide that time. They called Kansas Robinson for leaving early at first. A massive call over at the first base bag and a huge mistake by the true first year. Now Donahue takes it on the outside corner. If you're Northwestern, you're almost looking ahead to the next inning and saying, well, Lindsay's leading off the next inning isn't too bad. I mean, what a turnaround, Max. Looked like they had something cooking with the bottom of the order yet again. Now Donahue will have to start from scratch. She watches that one wide. Donahue swings through another. Lindsay on deck has had a great day. You wouldn't be too bummed if you're a Northwestern fan if Donahue made the last out just because Lindsay's reached twice. She could potentially get on and kick it back to the top of the order for maybe beginning next inning in a six. As Donahue watched that wide, I will say the, the stats for Enter are actually a little bit misleading. She has a 398 ERA. She's given up 10 unearned runs, Max, in addition to 11 earned runs in 19 and a third innings. 27 hits, 10 walks, 11 strikeouts. Her whip is nearly two. And strike out the walk ratio is basically one. But she gets a big K there. For Minnesota, it's two swings that have produced all seven runs. Strelo fouls that one off. That was one of the big stats coming into this one. A departure from the past couple of years of these two teams. One of the big numbers you look at, Max, coming into today, although Minnesota has played seven more games, 37 home runs for the Gophers, 12 for the Wildcats. So that speaks to exactly what you're talking about in terms of the way these two teams have built their offense so far this season. And for Minnesota, it's not been the long ball specifically, but getting runs on for the long ball. Two home runs doesn't create seven runs all that often. Strelo watches that one high. She's had a really tough day at the plate. Struck out twice, looking and swinging. Two of... Six, seven total Ks for Williams. Well, that's a tough thing with this Minnesota lineup, even with all the new faces. They have so much depth to it. You make one mistake, really, to just about anybody, one through nine. I mean, we've seen a, a, a three-run shot out of the five-hole today. That five-hole was leading the team in home runs coming in. Well, it's so deep that you got Kraft batting fifth. Well, I mean. that's the guess. There you go. Collects her tenth. Strelos now run the count full. And it's an interesting situation for Northwestern as well, Max, because... It's hard to blame them for leaving Daniel Williams in. She might have given up seven runs, but she's looked pretty good outside of a couple mistakes. And so it's popped on the infield. Another weak contact out for the Wildcat Ace. He's getting the ball inside the right-handed hitters, getting that contact down towards the handle in the air where it's staying on the infield. Right there. Way over the top of the changeup. Minnesota will necessarily get the top of their order up at least once more. So will Northwestern. We have not seen the last of the big hitters on these two teams. That's gonna be, it's been a great game here so far through a little over five innings, and it's gonna be a great finish if you're like in store. 
Popped on the infield and Nelson makes the play moving back. Getting her timing right. Not even close. Burnett caught that second pitch and just sent it yard. Since then, she's looked baffled by Williams. Three pitch K last time up. Swings and misses again. When we talk about the recruiting from Minnesota, I mean, I think Breezy Burnett is another prime example. All the way down in Florida playing her high school ball in Jacksonville and then coming up to play here in Minnesota. As big as the top of the fifth was as Burnett goes down on three straight swing and strikes for Minnesota for here. Lindsay watches the first pitch over the outside corner for strike one. Yeah, appearance number 17, just her second out of the bullpen. She's made 15 starts, one complete game, and that ERA is just 2.01. For Hambrick, another newcomer to this gopher group. Lindsay checks swing, swinging bunt. Can she beat it to first? The throw's away! It's gonna be maybe a triple of a different kind for Ayanna Lindsay. She's coming around the bases. Lindsay gets a triple the hard way and then gets a triple the slightly easier way. The Wildcats just like that in business on a bad mistake from the new catcher, Kraft. Did enough to make sure of the mistake from Kraft. That's a great piece of base running. On the way to first, you don't hear that too often, but by Anna Lindsay. And they call it officially an infield single with a two base error from the catcher, Minnesota's first error of the game. And Hambrick really quickly behind here with the runner on third. Not actually behind, but you know what I mean. And leadoff runner on again for the last five innings for the Wildcats. They've scored two of those runners, both with two outs, though. Shellmeyer works the count to 2-0. Oh. They would like to. <laughs> 2-0. -oh. Hit well up the middle. That's a base hit for Shellmeyer. She was in the box, says the home plate umpire. And it's an RBI single for Skyler Schellmeyer. The Cats have come back and even it once again. Back in the circle, the only option left for the Gophers in the bullpen is first year Sidney Schwartz. And Pease deals to Nelson for strike one. I think Piper Ritter's counting on this one, not going too deep and also counting on she's got to make the move now before it gets away. Yeah, she knows that this is when the game not necessarily is going to be won for Minnesota, but this is where it could be lost. You got to right. keep the score right now 7-7 going to the final frame. Minnesota, you see the top of your order coming up on the top of the seventh. You would love to get a tied game to them. Nelson shows bunt, pulls back, nearly gets hit. This is a pitcher Maeve Nelson loves to face. The 1-1, fouled at the plate. She looked like she was right on that one. That was right down the middle too. Yeah, Nelson entered today just two for her last 16, but she's reached face twice. There's been a whole lot of Wildcats that have been hit by a pitch today. She's got a base hit and a run score too. I mean, if you're Northwestern, this is the inning that you have to take the lead. This is the heart of the order up with nobody out and the go ahead run off. With the dangerous Jordan Rudd waiting on deck, Pease will certainly be going after Nelson here. Shellmeyer leaning off first. He's got six stolen bases this year. Nelson swings through it. Pease comes back in like she never left and delivers a K right away. Her re-entry with another strike yeah. Rudd watches the first pitch wide. Anna Katie waiting on deck has had one of the craziest days of the play you'll ever see. Hit twice and an infield single on a check swing that went about 15 feet. Rudd has had a bit more normal of an outing. The double, the pop out, and the strikeout looking. Watches it wide. Now if you're Minnesota here, Max, do you keep things on the edge or do you go after Jordan Rudd? How much are you worried about her power? Well, that's tough because now how much can you afford to go after her down in the count 2-0? Oh. you got to hope that she might chase us here. You know, they both these coaches talk about not nipping around, picking around the strike zone here, but you got to try to paint an edge. Rudd went after that one up high, maybe out of the zone, and fouled it away over the right side. Couldn't turn it around. Shellmeyer at first, one away. Tie game. Rudd watches it wide. Shellmeyer's going. The throw is not in time and gets briefly away from Stralo. Shalemeyer did not get the quickest jump at first, but it didn't look like Kraft was ready to throw. What a big 60 feet. 3-1 on Rudd, now do you just walk her? They do not. I think Rudd was expecting it. And she took a hittable pitch right there. Three and two on Jordan Rudd. 
Stays back, flies it to left center. Tough play for Den Hardog. She gets there! Full extension from Natalie Den Hardog to take away a hit from Jordan Rudd. Hannah Katie looking for yet another two out RBI. Check swing right back to the glove of Pease. She fooled her. And Pease escapes. Shellmeyer left in scoring position. Lauren Boyd is in the game, and it's a first pitch hit up the middle for Minnesota. A big move from Kate Drohan. Danielle Williams had retired the bottom of the order. One, two, three. What a spot this is. The last time we saw the top of the order up for Minnesota, they were trailing by two. Felt like they needed to come through, and they did. Oakland started that rally in the fifth of the single. They wound up putting up a three spot to take that 7-6 lead. And Boyd is behind Oakland 2-0. The right-hander making her 11th appearance on the year. 2.40 ERA. It's her fifth time out of the bullpen. 2.40 ERA, but 11-41 to 41 walk to strikeout. She gets one over there for strike one. Boyd has pitched in a lot of big games against a lot of big teams. Looks great against Oklahoma. Looks great against UCLA. Now having to face the top part of this Minnesota lineup in a huge spot. Way behind. That's one of the benefits to going to Boyd. It ticks up the radar gun just a hair. Coming from the right side instead of the left side gives you a different look, different look as well. Very different look. And she goes off speed and kind of gets Oakland off balance with that first strike, comes right back and just blows one faster. 2-2. Two -two. Oakland watches it low. Felt like Boyd had all the momentum in this at bat. Suddenly the count runs full and you cannot afford to once again put a runner in score position for Natalie Den Hardoff. The 3-2. Strike three called. Boyd Frozer with the change up, huge out one. She misses wide to Den Hardog. Natalie Den Hardog has come up three times in this game. She has hit three ground balls around the shortstop position. Two times she's been put out. Last time she beat Nelson up the middle and Nelson Interesting, still way in that hole. She got beat to her left last time. That one misses outside. 2-0. She's behind it again. Once again, Boyd falls behind 2-0. Blows a strike by. 2-1 on Den Hardog. Misses the outside corner. And that's the tough thing when you're facing such Great batters at the top of the order. And to avoid that, you got to get Den Hardog out here. Or throw a double play. 3-1. Popped in the air. She got what she wanted, but got underneath it. And Maeve Nelson puts away Den Hardog for the third time today. Two away for Matty Elke. Wildcats would love to get it to him in a tie game. Elke at the knees, strike one. It was a heck of a catch by Jordan Rudd behind the plate. Boyd is starting to paint the corners a little bit now. And when you're trying to paint the corners, it's nice to have maybe the best defensive catcher and best receiving catcher in the country. She was named the first inaugural Rawlings Gold Glove winner at catcher last year for the whole nation, not just for the Big Ten. She's got such strong hands. I mean, even that pitch just off the plate, able to just stick it work around that pitch and try to frame it on the edge. One and one on Elke. Chopped foul and Elke fished that time. One and two. Down and out. And how perfect would it be for Northwestern if he could get out of his inning, hang a zero, and have Kraft end the inning on deck, not able to get a bat in her hands at the play. Two, two. Down. And Lauren Boyd has fished around the edges, I think, a lot more than her coaching staff would have liked. Chases! Elke went after one way off the plate. And a massive break for Northwestern. Noah Kaufman, Max Toma with you on Big Ten Plus. The Z-Dax swings through the first pitch. It's been an honor to bring you this first game of what's sure to be a dynamite three-game series. 
And didn't it just feel like Kate Johan was really excited to see how competitive this series was going to be for three days? She sure was. Every time Minnesota Northwestern do battle, and they've done a whole lot of it over the past decade, it has been so fun. 1-1 to Zedak. Fouled away. I'm sure it's been a fun one if you're a fan of Minnesota or a fan of Northwestern. A lot of high-level softball coming your way. This game has really showcased what the Big Ten has to offer. One, two. Zedak checks it. She went around. For the third time in this game, Zedak set down on strikes. Another close check swing call. Nikki Cochran has had herself a day. Two doubles and a hit by pitch. And hits it sharply again. Oh, what a diving stop. Stralo somehow gets a glove to that ball. Can't collect it in time, but to even get there was incredible. And now a huge decision for Northwestern. Farnham in under it. Then Hardaw coming over, calls off Bradley, and makes the play in center. She is one for 24 early in her Northwestern career. She pops this one to shallow left. Tough play coming over, but making it on the run is Oakland. So battling through the single with ease is Autumn Pease of the sixth. To even it up. Pardon me, that was in the fifth of Crafton the Homer, of course. And she takes a first pitch strike from Lauren Boyd. Bonus softball, Big Ten opener, 7-7. Seven, seven. Could have asked for much more. And the pitching situations for these two teams are in very different places as Boyd misses wide. Autumn Pease, who pitched the first two and two-thirds innings of this game, has come back in to get the last two innings of this game. In that time span, Minnesota's burned two relievers. They only have one arm left in the pen, and Pease is up to 97 pitches. For the Wildcats, this craft is well behind that one to fall behind one and two. Danielle Williams pitched the first six. Lauren Boyd came in and got the seventh, and now she's on for the eighth. Sydney Supley, Kemi Henry, still available in the bullpen for Northwestern. One and two. Change up, hit up the middle. Dunhay off the glove. She was going to have a chance at Kraft there if she could field it cleanly, but instead it's a third hit of the game for the sophomore catcher, and the go-ahead run is aboard. Minnesota will be pinch running, who is capable of slapping or bunting in a situation like this. Shows bunt, pulls back, takes a ball. Yeah, it's been a season of highs and lows for her. Started the year 10 for 18 to the first six games. Was hitting well over 500. Had scored seven runs in the first couple of weeks, but she's over for her last 10 in her last three games. For Billy Connell, her fourth appearance, third as a pinch runner. Again showing bunt, this time it's a strike. One and one on Bradley, bunts through it. And now a tricky situation for Minnesota. And those are the tough ones trying to bunt, trying to pull that, and that's a high heat. Great pitch by Boyd, great call by Rudd and Gascoigne. And now one and two on Bradley. Chop towards second. Donahue goes to first. Oh, a big mistake from the first year. She could have cut down the lead runner there, I think, Max. A couple of little defensive misplays from Northwestern have made a big difference in this game. And that's not one you're going to find in the box score. There's no error there. You get the out. But that is kind of a mental blunder there. 0-1 oh on Stralo. Looking for her first time on base today. She has struck out twice and popped to second. And with the veteran team, I know it, it all happens fast, but your infield's got to be yelling where to go with that softball, too. That's hit on the ground I right agree. to your second baseman on a hop. you got to be yelling 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Especially Babe Nelson coming over to second, and we didn't see it, although that doesn't mean it didn't happen. 1-1. One, one. Popped in the air. Out of play. Cochran trying to run it down, but that will get into the Wildcat bullpen. Trust all three of them. But now it's Boyd. One, two. Oh, that's close. The Wildcats wanted it. They did not get it. It's two and two. You kind of feel like if you're going Western, this might have been a call you felt like early in the game you were getting when Danielle Williams was on the mound. It's a great, just filthy pitch. Just maybe a hair or two it's up. Grounded towards Donna. Hey, she stops it this time, but not going to get the outs. And a late stop, there's a playback in third. Oh, Katie missed the tag. Wow, that was a huge.
huge base running mistake for Connell and Katie Hatter, but couldn't get the tag down. We'll see. Middle infield now creeping a little bit. Cox takes it high. What a spot for both Lauren Boyd and Delaney Cox. Boyd has gotten three ground balls. Wildcats have produced just one out out of them, though to be fair, they've been hit pretty well. 1-0. Popped in the air. Cochran makes the call. Has the ball. And Lauren Boyd gets a massive second out. The lefty, or if they go freshman rather to another freshman, but bring up a lefty hitter. Westbrook very capable. We'll see if this one pays off too. Runners at the corners, two away. Checks her swing. She went around. That's not something she expected. It was a strike on one of them, it looked like. That's true. In the dirt, a good stop by Rudd. That's what she does. And you don't really notice sometimes just how incredible your catcher is until you don't have a great one, and maybe that gets away and you right. fall behind. But when you have a great one like you do with Rudd, sometimes you just take it for granted that she's going to stop a ball just like that. Now, Stralo has not yet run in a first and third situation with a running run at third. Let's see if she does. Nope. And the pitch is low again. On the game, she threw right back up the middle. Three and one on the pinch hitter. Hit well, foul. Lester showing why Coach put her in the game. That thing was stung, but the count runs full. Addison Lesper, as you mentioned, a true freshman in this Minnesota team. One of a few who have been huge contributors out of Thrall, Texas. Coming up to the cold to play for the Gophers. A chance for a massive hit right here. Full count, two outs. Takes a change up, strike three called. Lauren Boyd gets out of a jam. Reached base and scored all three times up from the nine spot. And she watches one low. That six pitch walk that kept the second inning alive is arguably the only reason we're still here, Max. After she drew that walk, the Wildcats scored four runs with two outs. She then tripled in a run in the third and came around to score in a massive turning point inning. As Lindsay takes another one low, and her infield single after the overthrow from Kraft. Lindsay gets on next four all get hits. And Ayana Lindsay continues her hot day at the plate. You talk about an unlikely source. It's a huge spot for her to show up. Shellmeyer tough bunt, and they let it go foul. A canny play by Chavez. Saw the spin on that one. It's been a dynamic duo, the nine and one spots for Northwestern. Absolutely. Both with a lot of speed. Lindsay's going. Schellmeyer takes the throw is high. And Ayanna Lindsay has her second stolen base of the year. Both today, the Wildcats have the winning run in scoring position with nobody out. The 1-1. One -one. Schellmeyer pulls back. This is almost an, an automatic bunt spot from a player like Schellmeyer, who is so experienced at getting them down. She bunted for 14 hits last year, Max, not even counting the sacrifices. And this is when you can afford to be a little bit more careful. It doesn't need to be right down the line. You're trying to advance a runner to third. There's no force there. Just get it down fair and not right to the pitcher. She bunts at it, but she couldn't make up her mind. And that's one of the worst bunts you'll see Schellmeyer attempt. Suddenly it's two and two, and now she's got to take stock. I'm done. Two, two. Instead she slaps and keeps the bat alive. Chavez having to charge on the pitch. Two and two. Up the line, Shellmeyer. oh it's played fair! And Shellmeyer is out but they get the job done and you wonder whether it would have been a better idea for Delaney Cox to let that one go foul. That's so hard to do, especially on the fly. There's nothing else she can really do there but try to feel the ball. Because if you let it go and it stays fair, that's disaster. Maeve Nelson takes a first pitch changeup for a strike. We saw a vanishing act from Lauren Boyd in the top half of the eighth. Can Autumn Pease repeat the feat in the bottom? Maeve Nelson one for three. Struck out with Shellmeyer in scoring position her last time up. Or pardon me, she was at first at that point. She swings right through in her eyes ball. This has been a strikeout machine today. Oh, that was close. That was a terrific pitch, and you'd think maybe if Rudd is the catcher back there, that maybe. might be stuck and received a little bit better, because that looks like it was 
right basically at knee height and almost on the outside corner. Remember, of course, in softball, that rule book strike zone starts directly above the knee, but if the ball catches a piece of that zone, it is in there. The one, two, flown down the line, that's gonna get foul, and it would be dropped anyways, I'm sure. By Burnett, no reason to risk anything there. The one, two, down. One heck of a take by Nelson on a pitch that disappeared below the inside corner. What a battle, what a game. Who's gonna step up and be the hero? Remember Autumn Pease started the game, pitched two and two thirds innings, was responsible for six runs. Came in, closed out the sixth and the seventh, cleanly. Now trying to escape the eighth. The 112th pitch of her game. Popped up, shallow outfield. Straylo makes the play. Lindsay not even thinking about it. And just as Lauren Boyd did, but if you're Northwestern, there's no one you'd rather have up. I'm surprised we haven't seen an intentional walk here from Minnesota. In fact, Jordan Rudd, the active leader in Northwestern RBI's fourth all time, needs another one here, popped up, but Straylo is there again. Minnesota plays with fire and they come far from getting burned to face Lauren Boyd. Boyd has made it through the order once, gone through two innings, has given up three hits, but gotten three strikeouts to get herself out of it unscathed. And now comes back to Kayla Chavez, who greeted her with a sharp single back in the seventh. I remember last year Northwestern only lost four conference games all year, but half of those to Minnesota. Chavez chops that one foul. Looks to be cruising towards the Big Ten Championship in a Super Regional hosting slot. Of course, they ended up slipping to ninth on the seed ladder, but went to Arizona State, got the job done anyways. That Tempe Super was something to watch last year. That was just a thriller for three games. You know what that proves? But as you said earlier in this game, Max, as Boyd fires the one-two, hit well to left. See that going back, it's over her head. And that did not clear her head by much, but once again, Minnesota has singled off the wall their third time today. And it's just a long leadoff hit for Chavez, who has now done two of those three singles off the wall herself. One of the best swings of the day, just let that get deep and just attacked it. But like you said, I mean, Zedek playing a little bit deeper maybe than your standard left fielder playing everything very well, the caroms off the wall, sure. and just really limiting Minnesota. They could have three more doubles, but instead she's held them three times to a single. In fact, Minnesota's only extra base hits have been their home runs. A couple of those doubles, if singles had turned into doubles, maybe things would be different. In so many innings, I actually already wrote down double there. You gotta, gotta change that one. Remember back in the fifth, Oakland singled off the wall. And Dan Hardog singled right after her. Now those runs did come around to score on the home run. As that's a strike on the outside corner to Oakland. Whoever can escape with a win here, as that one's popped down the line, long run for Lindsay, and it curves away from her. She was playing well over to right center. Like you said, the, the mental toll as well from losing a game like this. Just off the corner, Rudd tried her hardest to get that one for her pitcher. Said the count runs even on Oakland, two and two. On the freshman standout, she's one for three today. Singled off the wall, struck out twice, and been hit. Struck out looking her last time up against Boyd. Fouls that one sharply. Now we're starting to see Minnesota work the count against Boyd the way they did against Williams early in this one. There have been base runners aboard and seemingly every half inning today. You know, Northwestern's offense really hasn't had a true one, two, three, three up, three down in it. Minnesota has only had, they've only had three, and they had another that was close, but man, even in those one, two, three innings, Max, they've seen like 25 pitches, so it sure doesn't feel like a one, two, three inning. The two, two, popped up. Shellmeyer makes the play. And this is the longest we've gone in this game without either team plating a run. Part of the order like Dan Hardog just comes through with a clutch base hit. She's one for four, she watches that one wide. She did have a clutch base hit back in the fifth. Kraft came through behind her. And once again, Northwestern's in the same spot they were in in the seventh. One on, one out for Dan Hardog. And you don't wanna see Kraft come up in the five spot. 
You can't afford to give up another base runner this inning. At the knees for strike one. Herself for hitting pitches out of the zone or near to it, out of the park. That one goes out of the park, but not the way she intended, I don't think. Foul out of play, one and two. One, two. Well, why? Yeah, interesting to see, especially the, the next couple of days and just the way that both of these lineups kind of pan out the rest of the weekend because Northwestern, you kind of know at this point in the year, with the injuries aside, what that top six is going to look sure. like. But, you know, who else is performing well at the bottom of the order? Well, Lindsay, I would think, has to be in the lineup the rest of the weekend with how well she has done today. She cemented herself, there's no doubt about that. Pushed her batting average over 200 just today. The 2-2, popped up high, twisting out of play and right in front of us. That one was... It's remarkable, we haven't hit the three hour mark yet, we're in the ninth. And it's a seven to seven game. Yeah, and given how many pitches we've seen today. Swing and a miss. Huge K for Boyd, her fourth. And once again, she's one out away. Sydney Schwartz, the last available arm in the Minnesota bullpen, comes in to hit for Matty Elke, who, reminder, came into this game hitting 375. For Schwartz, the fifth at bat of her season, and she enters into the designated player spot with a chance to give her team the lead. Grounder to third, Katie with a nice stab to her left, and a nice play by Cochran to pick it up. She's worked five and two thirds, split into two appearances within this game. Katie, way back, walks it off. First pitch swinging, hand to Katie, said thank you and good night. The Wildcats win it, eight to seven.